Joe Rogan loves to talk about veganism. Vegan, 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 veganism, vegan diet, vegan, 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 vegan. And usually not in the most favorable light. Today we're looking at the worst anti-vegan moments in Joe Rogan history. Let's get started with the time Joe tells Russell Brand to quit his vegan diet. You're a fit guy, you're a healthy guy. If you just keep going, get off that fucking vegan diet and keep going. I watched a documentary <laughs> um, called What the Health. Have you seen yeah, it? It's, like, yeah, it's filled with a lot of propaganda. Oh, nonsense. propaganda. Damn, those guys are it getting is. like the Nazis. I remember well, them. It, it's, they used a lot of discredited studies, and the, there's a lot of epidemiology studies that will connect things. Joe then confuses epidemiology with surveys and claims the studies didn't correct for confounding variables, even when they did. It's basically a survey. You should eat eggs, though, man. You really should. Once again, Joe forces his anti-vegan view and tells Russell to eat animal protein. He should eat some animal protein. But at least he doesn't threaten to shove it up his butt like this next guest, Ted Nugent. Have you ever had to have a reasonable conversation with someone who's anti-hunting? You ever like sat Often. down? Yeah. Often. Absolutely. And, and to the man and woman, and I mean adamant, vegan, until I explain to him, well... Vegan, I like that. Vegan. <laughs> but vegan, whatever vegan, it is. Vegan, vegan. I can't even pronounce <laughs> it, much less... It barely comes out of your mouth. Figure it out. <laughs> Very so stupid. But by the way, <laughs> My son Rocco, mm -hmm. who I love beyond description, yep, vegan. No, yes, he, he has looks like he needs to eat more. Yeah, well, actually, I, when he's asleep, I try to shove a back strap up his ass, but <laughs> he's got more muscles than I do. We'll come back to this conversation later, but now let's look at the conversation with Cameron Haynes. When do hunters ever like get confrontational and violent with people who don't want to eat meat? When he's asleep, I try to shove a back strap up his ass. <laughs> when does that happen? Well, they think somehow or another by blocking this burger stand that they're changing the world. They're just trying to be activists. You know, they're trying to get a message out. And most of them will quit. They're going to quit veganism and they're going to start eating meat again because of their health. Yeah. That's, that's the truth. Joe claims that most vegans quit because of health, and this study shows that most vegans do quit, but the vast majority never experience health issues. Cameron then makes this ridiculous claim. Cam Newton, who is a quarterback of the Carolina Panthers, big dude, 6'6", he went vegan and he cannot get healthy. He cannot, he's been injured. He's, I mean, the face of the franchise, probably a $100 million contract, made it to the Super Bowl, but since just been on a decline, and it, it's like almost hand in hand with the change into vegan. Even though Cam Newton's decline started three years before he went vegan. But this isn't the only time veganism is unfairly blamed for health issues, with Rick Rubin blaming his obesity on the vegan diet instead of his sedentary lifestyle. I basically laid on a couch listening to music my whole life. That was my job and what I did not for my job. And I was vegan for 22 years and got very big. I weighed 320 pounds, 318 wow. at my max. The vegan thing really took me down a, a a dark path. And what about veganism got you that big? It's a it's a carb only diet. It's just carbs. Here's my chronometer from yesterday. As you can see, it's all carbs. But were you eating vegetables or were you eating pizza? Like what were you? What vegetables, you... pizza, whatever. Like whatever they serve in the vegetarian restaurant, they would serve like a tofu steak with a gluten brown sauce. You know, super, super unhealthy stuff, but I didn't know. Rick isn't the only person to vilify soy and gluten, with ex-vegan Steve-O claiming that the body can't even process these ingredients. I, I told them I'm, I'm vegan, and they were like, oh, well, that's the problem, is that like you're eating this highly processed fucking soy and wheat that mm -hmm. your body does not recognize as food, and clearly your body's struggling to break it down. Ugh. It's like, it's, like the, it's an absurd substance posing as food. Food. Well, those impossible burgers, we, we showed a study the other day that was showing that it's toxic for rats. Yeah. They, they fed rats the impossible burger and the rats are getting sick. It's like, Here's a quick list of foods that are toxic to rats. Steve-O isn't the only ex-vegan to appear on Joe Rogan. Next up is fighter Sean O'Malley. I ate that vegan diet for six months, but I did. I incorporated eggs into it because I just couldn't, I wasn't eating enough. But I never, I never felt bad. I didn't feel worse. I just didn't feel... Great. Once I started eating good quality meat again, I felt my energy levels. I'd wake up, I'd, my energy levels were way higher. 
I just felt more aggressive. I felt m more like manly. I felt m more like manly. The Contender Series fight, he weighed 138 pounds. He was a vegan at that time. I walked sickly, just well, like skinny. Well, there's more to that too than just the vegan diet. I had a concussion, a bad concussion. But at least he didn't blame his brain issues on veganism, which isn't the case for Miley Cyrus. I was vegan for a very long time and I've had to introduce fish and omegas into my life because my brain wasn't functioning properly. She neglects to mention that she stopped abusing drugs and alcohol shortly before quitting veganism, which could have also helped her brain. When it comes to my brain, you're not vegan. No. You can't be vegan and living this kind of, and being this quick, but sure you can, some people can, I cannot, because it was really giving, I was what having a lot What did it do for your brain? I feel that I'm much- Slowed you down? Now I'm so much sharper than I was, mm. and I think that I was at one point pretty malnutrition. Like I remember going to um, Glastonbury, and that was a show that I loved. I loved my performance but I was running on empty. Mm. Like I was on, were you, I was on were you, empty. Can I ask you, were you doing a vegan diet, like meticulous? The strictest you've were you ever known. But were you doing intelligently? Like I were did you all my supplements, the right way? I do and... all my protein drinks. Mm -hmm. I've watched every bodybuilder's YouTube about how they still You can't pay attention to those train. guys. Train, that's what I'm saying. All of yeah. a sudden I'm like, those all guys I need is are... celery and like, why are my thighs like fucking huge? There are plenty of ways to get omegas on a plant-based diet, but apparently you can't get them from watching YouTube and eating celery. But when it comes to bogus health claims, Chris Cresser is king, trying to pass off his ex-vegan anecdote as evidence against veganism. I was a vegan, I was vegetarian, I was a raw food vegan, I was a macrobiotic vegan, I have a lot of friends who are vegan, I have patients that are vegan, I have nothing against vegans. And I totally get the reasons that people become vegan. But I, like my, many others and my patients and my community, my health was harmed by that. I lost weight and as you can see, I don't have a lot to lose to begin with. Um, I, my digestion got really screwed up. I got depressed. I'd never been depressed. Like I've never been a person who gets depressed. Although that one was worth it to watch James Wilkes completely destroy him in their debate, changing Joe's mind in the process. I know all of your critiques because I've noted them and I've got a point for each one. So where is the evidence, that, you, where is the evidence that, 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 that rivers and streams and dirt has been a primary source well, I'm, gonna, of I'm obviously going to give it to you. Okay. You think I came here today? You think I made claims in the film that I couldn't back up? All of the statements that I made in the film were true, and you said that they were patently false, and you were wrong. I didn't. Joe, come on. <clears throat> I, like, now well, listen, I've, I've come in here. Yeah, I've right? said I've, it already. Yeah. yeah. No, so I, I just want to make you're, sure. You're correct. Moving away from health, let's see what happens when people try to find holes within ethical veganism. One of the most insane arguments comes from Neil deGrasse Tyson. I've never seen anyone say, save the leeches. No, or no one cares about bugs. Save the ticks. In particular, parasites. Save the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes, you know, the biggest enemy of humans, as big an enemy as we are to each other through warfare in the history of civilization, the greatest enemy to human life has been the mosquito. If you really into animals and don't want to kill them. If you heard that ticks were endangered, would you start a movement to protect ticks? And if you would, uh, more power to you. But I'm thinking you're not. Why would you if you know about Lyme disease? Although it seems like even Joe picks up on why this argument is bullshit. Why would you if you know about Lyme disease? Neil spouts more nonsense appeals to futility. By the way, the home that where you're saving the mouse, it's probably made from the wood of about 50 trees. Each tree could have lived 100 years but didn't because it was cut down to make your home. Each of those trees was home to birds and insects and fungus and squirrels. And no argument against veganism is complete without plants' rights advocates stepping up to the plate, confusing responses to stimuli with sentience. These are fascinating. Mm. I've heard people say, well, the mouse has a beating heart and the tree does not, or plants do not, and animals do. And I said to my, well, let me think this through. If you cloak a tree, does it not suffocate? If you cut a tree, does it not bleed? If you fuck a tree, does it not come? If you cut off its nutrients at the base, does it not wither and die? Is this as good for you as it is for me? We can't end this video without coming back to Ted Nugent, who forever changed the online discourse surrounding veganism with this one argument. If you really want to kill the most things, be a vegan because the farmers who protect your beans kill everything. I kill one animal per arrow. In order to grow tofu, you have to kill every ground squirrel, every vole, every shrew, every snake, every turtle, every frog, every bird, every rabbit, every possum, every tree, every baby. Yeah.
anything that gets in that bean field, I'm either going to plow and dismember, which is why the crows and the and the Soldiers. seagulls follow the the uh, the, combines. the combines every year. And then if anything does survive my first slaughter, I'm going to come in with Monsanto and poison the shit out of everything so you can have a tofu salad and not be responsible for any death. Fuck you. That's a really good point, and it's Hello? a point that a lot of people ignore. When we look at the numbers, vegan diets kill far fewer animals. There's also veganic farming, which doesn't kill any. But that fact doesn't stop Ted from speaking with absolute confidence, and my comment section will be forever tarnished because of his conviction. So for that reason, I'm crowning him king of the clouds. That's a really good point, and it's Hello? a point that a lot of people ignore.